Good evening. On this, the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time, we'd like to welcome all of you worshiping with us here today and those worshiping with us at home. First Sunday of the month means we have a collection for the food pantry as our extra basket. Those are the ones closest to the back. Um, our food pantry this month of January served 504 households with 244 groceries delivered home. It is due to your generosity that we are able to supply our local community with this wonderful service, and we thank you for all your support. As a friendly reminder, our gluten-free cup is located in front of the choir. If you think of the church as a clock, it will be at 12 o'clock for all of you who cannot come in contact with gluten and use the regular chalices. Please stand as we sing number 25 in the hymnal supplement. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of a compassionate God, and the communion of a Holy Spirit be with you this evening. And with your spirit. Before we listen to God's word tonight, let us ponder about God's mercy. No matter how hard we try to be good, we sometimes fail. But we also know that God always forgives us. When we have failed to act as Christians, Lord have mercy. When we forget to practice redemption, Christ have mercy. As we labor for justice and peace in the world, 
Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Out of your love and compassion, O God, Jesus, your Son, came into our afflicted world to proclaim the day of salvation. Heal us and all those who are brokenhearted. Bring us health of body and spirit and raise us up to a new life in your service. Grant this through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives with you in the unity of a Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not a man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of a hireling? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? The night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, there is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That, when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached and grasped her hand and helped her up. And then the fever left her and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, 
they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, everyone's looking for you. He told them, let us go to the nearby village that I may preach there also. For this purpose, I have come. So he went into their synagogues preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. There are many stories in the New Testament about healing miracles performed by Jesus. The evangelist Mark uses these episodes to describe Jesus exercising his ministry as a Messiah, a redeemer who had definitive authority over anything or anyone having to do with evil spirits sickness, oppression, and even death. Some believe Jesus cured people from whatever ailed them. The gospel today uses the word, he cured her. He cured others, said the gospel. Today, you and I long for miraculous cures for cancer, dementia, sickle cell anemia, and other diseases that continue to plague us. But did Jesus actually cure people, or did he heal people? In the Bible, healing is different from curing. The translators who look at these texts help us understand the difference. When Jesus healed people, he was not just about fixing things in the moment, like Peter's mother-in-law, making them see, walk, feel better, rise up again. Oh no, the purpose of those actions was to inspire the healed person and those who witnessed the act to transform their lives, to follow Jesus, to become healers of humanity themselves. In the Bible, healing is a long transformative process, one geared up to bring about, slowly, the kingdom of God here on earth through acts of loving kindness. In today's gospel, once Peter's mother-in-law was healed from her fiery fever, what did she do? She got up and she started offering hospitality to everybody else. Jesus does not tell us why suffering exists. It's still something that we have a big question about, but he never tells us why suffering exists. However, Jesus does show you and me how to deal with it. As the long-awaited eschatological prophet, someone who looks to the end times, it was Jesus's vocation to heal humanity from pain, and in doing so, deliver people from oppressive regimes, what Paul calls the powers and the principalities. They still exist in the world today, don't they? That's the political message of the Gospels that has been entrusted to all Christians. Yes, the Gospels have a political message as well as a message of love and trust and hope. Through his miracles, Jesus revealed a time, an end time, when all people would experience, all people would experience freedom 
from illness, disease, oppression, persecution. We refer to that time as eternal life. I don't know about you, but who can wait that long? We want it now. So Jesus was slowly fulfilling the promise of liberty. You have to recall that the Roman Empire was not a friend of the Israelites at that time. He was slowly fulfilling the promise of liberty from dictators, power mongers, greedy financiers. It would eventually be a time when justice becomes the hallmark of every country and every institution. Imagine that. Jesus of Nazareth performed those redemptive acts before his execution on the cross. Proclaiming freedom was a costly mission for him. His antagonists were suspicious of his words and his actions as they followed him around. They wanted to get rid of him, and they did. What does it cost you and me to be followers of Christ? What does it cost you and me to be healers of humanity? The author Murphy Davis, a tireless advocate for homeless people and incarcerated persons on death row, once wrote that we cannot just go about with the flow. To do so, she wrote, is to give silent assent to the realities of war and oppression, violence, crushing poverty, mass imprisonment, executions, and the destruction of the earth. Not to do anything about it is to give silent assent to those evils. When she was alive, Murphy Davis urged her colleagues and others to make good use of their time here on earth. To do what? To perform redemption. To perform redemption. You and I are called to perform redemption. But every healing process takes so much time, many of us don't even want to be bothered. Addicts overcoming addictions, unemployed persons hunting for a job, incarcerated persons spending time in correction facilities, people waiting in long lines at food pantries and soup kitchens, immigrants reaching across borders. All of these persons know what it means to be resilient and steadfast as they search for peace and sustenance in their lives. In the worldview of the gospel, physical illness is no less a mark of evilness in the world. There is a continuity between the healing that took place in the house of Peter in today's gospel and the exorcism that took place in the synagogue in last week's gospel. So, too, there is continuity between those ancient biblical stories that we read here in church and our own modern lives. There's a continuity there. Our world is, is off track. It's off track. We can ignore the facts about inequality, climate change, and looming threats to freedoms, but these factors are eroding lives of millions of young and older people alike. The story about Job this evening is our story. Job's life was turned upside down, and he began to think he would never see happiness again, said the text. This tale is commonplace today. Life is a terrible drudgery for people all across the cultural, educational, and financial spectrum in this planet. People who are afraid, lonely, poor, disoriented. Yet here, here we are, right? Here we are. We show up in this holy place to be sustained by one another in a ritual sacrament, to remember who the Christ was, what he did, why he died. We also remember and believe in being raised up again, like Jesus was. Our faith is not just in the mission, passion, death, and resurrection of Christ. Our faith and our hope now rests with all of us, each of us. Our love for one another, family, friends, children, grandchildren, 
our hope rests with each and every one of us. That hope of ours should steer in us a desire to be proactive, working for peace, justice, reconciliation among all peoples. It doesn't take an awful lot of hard work. Just smile. Be nice. The psalmist said, God heals the brokenhearted. How does God heal the brokenhearted? God does that through us. Our passion for doing good is the same that Jesus had for healing the world. He showed up to dispel evil, evil spirits, and evildoers. And now is the time for us to do what you and I have been called to do. Perform redemption. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, confident that God walks with us and listens to our voices, we now offer these prayers of petition. For the church, may it be a place of dignity and healing for all those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For world leaders, may those instructed with the stewardship of nations do so in service to those on the margins. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For catechumens, Dylan, Kathy, and Alexander, and for confirmation candidates, Stella and Jose, may they find places for quiet <coughs> prayer, attentive to God's desire for them. We pray to the Lord. For our St. Vincent's family, may we find ways to heal the broken hearts of those around us and bind the wounds of our community and our world. We pray to the Lord. For victims of human trafficking, may they have staunch advocates who help them find freedom and a path to a safer life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from depression, anxiety, and other mental health challenges, may they find hope in a future where they will again see happiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, and those grieving among us, and for Reverend Michael Fufard and all of those who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord 
for the prayers written in our book of intentions and for those we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God, our shelter and strength, we trust that our hope is not in vain and that our prayers will be answered through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this time, if you've brought an offering, you're invited to bring it forward to the baskets on the altar platform. The food pantry baskets are labeled. You can also make your donations online by going to our website and clicking the donate button. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, pray now that these gifts might be presentable to a gracious and loving God. May the Lord set aside the your hands to praise the Lord of our God's name for our and all God's children. Gracious God, you have provided food and drink to sustain our earthly lives. Grant, we pray, that this bread and wine may become the sacrament that gives us eternal life. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, holy God. Almighty and eternal God, all things are of your making. All times and seasons obey your laws. You fashion the human family to be stewards of your never-ending creation, to protect the world in all of its wonder. 
We praise you day by day for the marvels of your presence and wisdom in our lives. We do so through your Son, Jesus Christ. In Christ, this heavenly family worships in awe before your presence. So may our voices blend now with theirs, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Bless also is your Son present in our midst whenever we are gathered by his love. And when as once he did for his friends and disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures, breaks the bread, and shares the wine. Therefore, most merciful God, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to this entire room to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us his body and blood, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. But this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. And whenever you do this, remember me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, most holy one, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on a cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, gracious God, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, and all those people who are doing good work. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us in words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church here on earth stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ 
and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is over that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever in communion with Mary, the mother of God, her husband, Joseph, Saints Vincent de Paul, Louise de Marillac, and Rose of Lima. Together we shall praise you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Mm, through him, with him, and in him, O God, most Holy One, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the command of Jesus, informed by his teachings, we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, loving God, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from doing evil deeds, free from evil itself, safe from all distress and sickness, as we await the blessed hopes and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of God. Our brother Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins. We ask you to look at our faith and the good work of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live now and forever. Amen. So may the peace of Jesus Christ always be with all of you. Amen. Offer one another a sign of that peace. Brother and sister Christians, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one we believe takes away all the sins of the world. All are welcome to share in the supper of the Lamb.
charity, we are filled with a new desire to perform redemption, to carry out the gospel message entrusted to us that brings about peace and justice for all peoples. Be with us on this journey, this journey that we walk with Jesus Christ, who promised freedom from injustice and sickness forever and ever. Amen. Next week is the chili cook-off and chocolate sundae. We are still in need of some chili entries, so if you feel like cooking next weekend, give it a shot. Sign up is in the vestibule with the big poster. There is a clipboard right underneath it. Baked goods will be available after all masses next weekend, but the chili tasting and voting will happen after the 11 a.m. on Sunday. Our Faith on Film series returns for Lent. It'll be starting Saturday, February 17th. The first movie will be Chocolat, and they'll be in meeting room one at 2 p.m. Peace efforts of the Sisterhood of Salam Shalom will be featured in a panel discussion here, offered February 25th at 9.45 in meeting room one. This is a local chapter of a national organization that fosters dialogues between Muslim and Jewish women. Please let the parish office know if you or a loved one are in the hospital. Our pastoral care team would love to support you during that time. You can also let the hospital know on your intake. Your parish is no longer a question they ask when they take you into the hospital, but if you offer that information, we will be notified. A six-part Zoom-based discussion on the book Learning to Walk in the Dark begins Tuesday, February 17th at 7.30 p.m. There's a QR code in the bulletin with more information on how to sign up, or you can contact me in the office. Ash Wednesday is February 14th, coming up quick. We will have mass at noon that day. There will be a service with ashes at six o'clock that evening. And St. Rose is offering a service with ashes at 8.30 in their interfaith sanctuary, 8.30 p.m. Though he's not here with us this week, this week is Father Kerwin's birthday, so we'd like to acknowledge that. Are there any other birthdays, anniversaries, or just special events? Happy birthday! Anyone else? Have a blessed week. The Lord be with you. Lift your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God bless you and me, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is over. I hope you have a nice evening. Let us all go in peace to love and serve God and to be nice to one another. Thanks. Thanks.